Good afternoon, esteemed guests, friends, and family. My name is Vinay, and I'm Gayatri's older brother. It is an honor and privilege to welcome you to Gayatri's Arangetram. Bharatanatyam is an artistic discipline of the highest order, and Gayatri has put vast amounts of dedication, time, and effort into the collection of art she has prepared for you all today. However, I am very much underqualified to explain these works of art to you. So in lieu of that, I would like to introduce someone who is qualified and able to better your understanding of Gaither's performance today. Without further ado, I would like to introduce today's wonderful MC, Sapna Arvind. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Vinay. On behalf of the Natyanubhava Dance Academy and the Nair family, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the Bharatnatyam Arangetram of Gayatri Nair. My name is Sapna Arvind, and I'm honored and humbled to be your MC tonight. Arangetram, or ascending the stage, really marks the beginning of a lifelong journey of exploration and self-discovery with a little bit of magic and a whole lot of passion. I've been lucky to have had a front row seat to Gayatri's Bharatnatyam journey, having been in many of her dance classes as a student myself. I can tell you, Gayatri is the consummate dancer. She's the full package. She's graceful and has a keen sense of rhythm and beat, and she emotes with feeling. I know she's going to dazzle tonight. I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the members of our esteemed orchestra. They're all extremely talented and deserve special recognition. On the Naktavangam this afternoon is our guru, Dr. Nalini Rao, a reputed dancer, teacher, and choreographer. Akka, as I fondly call her, is warm, loving, compassionate, knowledgeable, kind, graceful, and above all, she's just a wonderful human being. Also on the Naktavangam, we have Ms. Maya Rao Murthy, the Associate Director of Natyanubhava Dance Academy. Ms. Rao Murthy is herself a talented Bharatnatyam dancer, in addition to being a percussionist and a Naktavangam specialist. Ms. Maya Rao Murthy. Our vocalist this afternoon is best described as a Westchester celebrity and a local gem. Srimati Ranjita Ayer is a musician par excellence with many awards and accolades to her name. She also happens to be our dance at Gayatri's erstwhile music teacher. <laughs> Keeping the orchestra to the beat is our multi-talented and versatile mridangist, Sri Murli Balachandran. I consider myself a premier fan, often mesmerized by his ability to play multiple percussion instruments. We are very happy to have on the violin yet another multi-talented musician and instrumentalist, the famous Sri A.R. Balaskandan. We're very lucky to also have uh, someone straight from India, Sri Ravi Chandra Kulur, on the flute this afternoon. He's a music icon in his own right, so you can expect to hear melodious notes from him. So, now that you've met all the important people up here on this stage, I welcome you to sit back and enjoy what I promise to, is going to be a scintillating show. And without any further ado, let's begin. So Gayatri begins this momentous evening with a vibrant and energetic Pushpanjali choreographed by our own talented Ms. Maya Rao Murthy. In this dance, Gayatri begins by offering flowers to Lord Nataraja, the cosmic dancer form of Lord Shiva, and seeks the blessings of her guru and the orchestra. In this dance, she invokes the remover of all obstacles, the lover of Modakas, goddess Uma's son, the elephant-faced Vigneshwara. There's a very short and sweet Jugalbandhi in the middle, which I think is absolutely delightful. 
So please enjoy Pushpanjali in Ragam Vijay Vasantam, set to Adi Talam. But before we begin, we always like to invoke the remover of all obstacles, Lord Ganesha, and Srimati Ranjita Ayer will start us off with a prayer to Lord Ganesha. Please enjoy.
भुजम दंडम जुंडुम दद्दीमता
Apologize for the technical difficulties. The benefits of living in the 21st century, right? So, wasn't that such an amazing and auspicious beginning to this wonderful evening? Gayatri, that was spectacular. I just wanted to keep watching. So let's keep going, shall we? This next dance is the Alaripu, which literally means to blossom. It refers to the opening of the mind, body, and limbs in preparation for the more difficult items that follow. While elegant in its simplicity, the Alaripu demonstrates that rhythm has a wonderful capacity to invoke concentration. In dancing the Alaripu, Gayatri demonstrates handritta, or pure dance ability, all the while dancing to a three-beat rhythm. This Alaripu is in traditional choreography, and has been composed by the Tanjo Quartet in Ragam Nate, set to Tishra Jati Adi Talam. Please enjoy. Um, a brief, brief, quick request uh, from a wonderful audience. Um, since these are very complex pieces, we do request 
that if you need to leave the auditorium for any reason or come in, please do it before the item begins and after the item finishes. There are a lot of little children in the auditorium and so I expect the parents to keep track of them. Thank you. That was beautiful. So let's continue. Gayatri will next perform the Jatishwaram, which is also a pure dance on Ritta item in which intricate sequences are fused with repetitive musical notes. 
This particular Chatishwaram has been choreographed specifically for Gayatri by Dr. Rao and is in Ragam Nalina Kanti set to Adi Talam. You'll observe that in this particular Jatishwaram, there is one fixed Jati or spoken syllables and multiple Swaras or stanzas, hence Jati Swaram. Please enjoy Gayatri's rendering of the Jatishwaram.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving an extra round of applause to this palpable chemistry from the orchestra. That was just phenomenal. Really beautiful, beautiful work. This next dance, Madhura Madhura Meenakshi, is in praise of the reigning deity of Madhure, goddess Meenakshi, who speaks words as sweet as honey, Madhura, and who has beautiful eyes shaped like a fish. Innovative choreography by Dr. Rao explores some contemporary themes when the dancer implores the Devi, I see you in the flowers, birds, bees, and animals. Yet, wherever I look, there is poison in the form of ego, inequality, sadness, wild fires and ravaging floods. What wrong have we done that you're so angry at us? Devi is present in all forms of nature. The gurgling brook sounds like the tinkling bells of our anklets as she walks gracefully and delicately. And the twittering birds 
sound like her sweet voice. She's also the eternal mother, warm and loving. The dancer visualizes Devi as a little girl, frolicking and joyful, and skilled at playing multiple instruments. Yet, she's also powerful and destroyed many evil demons. As the universal protector, Devi is one half of Lord Sundareshwara and stopped the celestial poison that he had consumed from entering his heart. So this beautiful song, Madhra Madhra Meenakshi, is in Ragam Bhagyashri and Adi Talam. And the dancer ends by finally realizing that rather than search for Devi elsewhere, she should find her within and imagines her relationship with the Devi as being personal and deep. Please enjoy this beautiful song.
Well done, Gayatri. I now invite Srimati Bindya Sabrinath to join me up here on stage. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Srimati Bindya Sabrinath, a well-known practitioner of Indian dance, is a Bharatnatyam, Mohini Atam, and Kuchipudi dancer. She's also an alumnus of the Kalakshetra Foundation in Chennai. Mrs. Sabrinath received a presidential award for representing Mohini Atam from Kerala during India's Republic Day celebrations in 1998. And she established the Mayura School of Arts in 2000 and has over 70 students in the New York, New Jersey area. Please welcome Gayatri's Mohini Atam teacher, Srimati Bindya Sabarinath. Namaskaram. Good evening, everyone. Mada Pida Guru Namaha. Standing here today, I'm very happy to see how Gayatri grown as a matured woman, I would say. I started uh, teaching uh, Mohini Atam for Gayatri when she was very young. She had little baby face and long hair. She has an attractive eyes. As soon as I saw her, I told her, Mohiniyatam, 
is going to give you a lot of immense joy when you perform to the audience. At the same time, she was learning Bharatanatyam with our respected teacher, Nalini Rao. She's one of, uh, I would say that she was one of my close to heart student because of her dedication, commitment, and humble and simplicity to the art form as well as, as the personality. The way she respects the teacher, the way Gayatri approaches to the art form, you can see it is completely different than, I would say, the student, most of my students. That's because of Ajit and Shaila. So I would give a big round of applause to Ajit and Shaila. Being in America, it is very challenging to pursue our Indian art form. At the same time, holding up our own traditional value and being in within the community where we are living. But Gayatri balanced both of her life in a beautiful way. And I am very surprisingly to see that usually students do the graduation Darangetram before they go to college. But after she went to college, um, always she contacts me for any questions or any kind of, uh, uh, about any kind of art forms. So we have a, a, a good personal relationship between me and Gayatri. So when she said that she is going to do the Baranetam Arangetram, I was so surprised because she just went to college. But she kept up that commitment and she rented a studio there and she, while the other students are going out, enjoying their college life, she committed her time and hours and dedicated for the practice. And as you see today, it's not going, going to happen um, within a day or a week. It's take immense time and commitment and dedication for many months. So nothing more to say from a teacher's <laughs> teacher's mouth, it is something more than what I expected from a student. So I'm so happy that I got a special invitation to be here and um, good luck to um, Gayatri for the rest of the items and thank you for inviting me and we have an amazing orchestra here. Uh, so we all, hopefully I can see one day Gayatri conduct an arangetram here from with her students, she would love to pursue teaching as well. So good luck for everything to Gayatri and thank you so much for inviting. Thank you so much, Mrs. Avrinath. Very nice of you to come up here. We, I now invite Gayatri's best friend, Shirin Dadina, to come up here to say a few words. Hello everyone, my name is Sharon Dadina and I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to you today about Gayathri and share some of my favorite memories. I hope it'll give you some insight into the girl behind the performance from the perspective of growing up together. Gayathri always had a strong, fiery energy about her. One day in kindergarten, I'd excitedly made her a bracelet with my new bead kit. After giving it to her for reasons still unclear, my younger sassy self took over and I demanded she give it back. Instead of being confused or angry, as you would expect from any five-year-old, she simply handed it back understandingly. This was my first memory of her maturity and generosity, even at such a young age. I know you're all dying to know what happened to the bracelet. Unfortunately, I have no idea. But what I do know is that Guy 3 quickly became my best friend and her bold character only continued to blossom. That year, we made tie-dye dolphin t-shirts, 
starting our tradition of matching outfits, and I think we both agree that those pictures are our best yet. As we got older, completely unplanned this time, I would often show up to school and have teachers call us twins after seeing Gayathri wearing the same outfit. Even in elementary school, Gayathri was unafraid to take opportunities and run with them. I recall how excited she was to be chosen to perform a solo portion of This Pretty Planet in Mr. Sweetlicky's course concert, one of her more hidden talents at the time. By the time we got to fifth grade, Gayathri was one of the most diligent students in the classroom. Meanwhile, at recess, she'd be outrunning most of the boys during tag. She would go on to swing fiercely through the monkey bar course without stopping once. I would stare in disbelief, barely being able to hang on for a few seconds. As you can probably tell, we were very different, but we also meshed well together. She understood me and stood by me. So here we are 15 years later. Flashback to 2013, we started middle school and in 2016, high school. In these new environments, we grew even closer. After school, I enjoyed studying in the library with Gayathri as she always motivated me. Even after seeing each other in class all day long, somehow we had more to chat about. Whether we were cracking up about saying the same thing at the same time or mocking each other, I never felt alone. Maybe it was for the free treat. When it comes to her character and friendships, she is a rock. Loyal, unwavering, and always willing to help. I recall how she was the first one, even before the teachers, to run up and help me when I was sick after learning I do not enjoy roller coasters as much as I th thought on her Six Flags field trip. Her nature of sticking with something was also evident in the many activities she was involved in. Whether it was writing papers for school, dance practice, or sports, she kept going even when it was difficult. With the side of stubbornness in the best way possible, she never quit what she started, and that speaks volumes to her character and how far she has come today. Her level of grit and tenacity is rare to find, and is one of the reasons she has always been someone who's inspired me. High school brought along more challenges, but also the best memories. I recall the joy of standing together on the big stage holding our first science research awards. Guy through his amazing, amazing creative skills, attention to detail, ability to problem solve and think outside the box is what makes her stand out. When she sets her mind to something, she consistently desires to produce her best work possible. Those qualities carry over not only to her current science research project, but to her achievements in dance and everything she does. Dance has always been an important part of Gayathri's life, no matter what else was going on. She found a way to balance it all between taking on singing classes, sports, and other school activities for years. Her discipline and dedication was evident in the hours she spent in her basement perfecting her dance routines. She has expressed her love, form, her love for this art form in many other imaginative ways. She included a vibrant art piece in her school portfolio showcasing some of the intricate jewelry design and accessories associated with classical dance. She has helped film and edit many music videos with her family, which she has starred in, bringing a beautiful story to life through this art form. The connection she has to dance is remarkable, and her ability to harness these technical skills to take on the nature of the characters on stage is truly meaningful. I can see how dance grounds her, connects her closer to culture, and provides a sense of fulfillment. I'm thrilled we're all here to witness a piece of the story today. As you watch the rest of these amazing dance sequences, it will be hard to miss the resilient girl behind it all who has put in the years of hard work mastering her craft. She's gained a profound understanding of the tenets of classical dance and music. Her talent, passion, commitment has brought us to this moment. Though I do not get to have fun with her every day like I used to, when she would scare me in the gym locker room or make me giggle as we roamed the halls before orchestra concerts, I watch with pride and love, even if it's from afar. Cheers to my first and forever friend, Guy Three, Hardy's congratulations on this exhilarating performance. You've earned it. Thank you for letting me be a part of your special day, and thank you everyone for listening. Please enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you, Shirin. Um, as Gayathri now will continue with her dress change, uh, my guru, Dr. Nalini Rao, and I will uh, together demonstrate what the Varnam will be. So please bear with us while we get mic'd up. And here she is. <laughs> Akash, should we go to the center? Yeah, sure. And uh, before I, um, I'd like to welcome our guest of honor, and I thank you so much uh, for the, for all of you for coming. 
And uh, we have Savitri Ramanan here with us, Vishri Ramanan. And the beautiful wow. dance you just saw, Madhura Madhura Meenakshi, uh, I heard, first heard her sing it uh, 21 years ago. It is set to tune, I believe, by her guru, Shri Govindala. Mm -hmm. So welcome you all, especially the uh, uh, Gayatri's Mohini Atam teacher. To, I welcome you as a fellow guru. <laughs> I'll go on this side. Mm. So we begin this Varnam, uh, which is a traditional, uh, actually has traditionally been a uh, Dasarapada, choreographed by, uh, composed by St. Purandara Dasa, which Dr. Rao has transformed into a Pada Varnam in very creative ways. So as a duo, we're going to walk you through what the Varnam is and give you our perspective as the dancer will demonstrate what it really looks like. Yes, we are. So we're really hoping that this will be more of a dialogue where we involve the audience so that you understand the gestures as Gayatri proceeds. This dance is really a dedication to Lord Shiva, who is mighty and bears the moon upon his head, and his beautiful consort, Parvati, who are fused together as one. And there he is, fierce. Shiva is interesting, a study in contrast, isn't it? Yes, the Ghora and the Aghora. <laughs> He's wild, he cannot be set in the social rules, yet he is the spouse of Devi Parvati, and he has children, our Ganesha, whom we love, and Skanda, Subramanyam. This study in contrast, which we hope to present. So the Sancharis allow the dancer and the choreographer to emote and bring out different stories, mythical stories, about Shiva and Parvati. And the first such story that you'll see Gayatri perform is of Arjuna mm -hmm. doing penance to Lord Shiva. And as you know, Arjuna thinks he is the greatest archer of all. And he's a great bhakta, he's doing the rudram. <laughs> and he's hoping that Shiva will bless him. So Shiva and Parvati are very pleased with him. They decide to come down to earth but to test him. So what does Shiva do, cheeky that he is? He transforms himself into a tribal hunter. And how Parvati do I look? He asks. Admires, <laughs> ah, always handsome. <laughs> and Shiva decides to send a boar Arjuna's way to distract him from his penance. And Parvati also transforms herself in fact, they say all the gods come as tribal people, and she too comes <laughs> to have some fun. Now, Arjuna, who's deep in penance, wakes up, seeing the boar, and with one shot, kills the boar. Mm. But when he goes to see, he notices not one, but two arrows at the exact same spot. Whose second arrow is this? He's not pleased, eh? Who is this? <laughs> Turns out, the tribal hunter claims that boar is mine, not yours. <laughs> and Arjuna says, Are, that's clearly mine. Don't you know who I am? Everyone speaks. And Parvati me. laughs at Shiva and says, he claims he's better than you. <laughs> Shiva too says, <laughs> he thinks he's the greatest archer <laughs> of all. So of course, Arjuna doesn't like this, and the two hmm. begin to exchange arrows at each other. Shiva says, okay, let's do this. <laughs> and so. And it continues. Mm -hmm. But Arjuna realizes, despite his legendary aim, doesn't seem to hurt the hunter. Yes. Every arrow that goes to the hunter becomes flowers and falls at the hunter's feet. 
who is this? And that's when he realizes that the garland that adorned the Shivalinga is now on the huntsman's neck. This is Lord Shiva himself. And even as he looks, Shiva changes and comes so pleased with his devotee and says, you have my blessings here, Vijayi Bhava. And he gives him, awards him, the Pinaka, a celestial bow and arrow. So that's the first story that you'll see. Uh, Shiva's prowess as a person who constantly protects his devotees continues with the second story where we talk about King Sagara, who has a hundred odd sons. Mm. Clearly, <laughs> he's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> so he decides to conduct an Ashwamedha Yagya, which is where they allow a horse to freely roam, and any area that's uncontested now belongs to the king. Now his sons, I guess it's because he has so many of them, are really arrogant. <laughs> and they go following. And then they see that it's going deep into Patala. Oh, because Lord Indra wanted to play mischief mm. and stole away the horse to the netherworld mm -hmm. and tied it next to a sage who was doing penance, Sage Kapila. And the, the hundred sons rudely wake him up from his penance. But awakening a mighty sage who is deep in penance is sure to bring ill luck. The sage, with the fire with which he wakes up, destroys all the sons to mere ash. Now, King Sagara is distraught. How will their souls ever reach heaven if they've been destroyed in such a horrific manner? So one after the other, each king in the Sagara lineage, they pray, they do tapasya. No use. Then Lord Brahma. No, then finally, ah. remember? Bhagiratha says, yes. I don't want this kingdom. I will just do tapasya alone. Right. That's my single focus now. And then? And then Lord Brahma blesses him by saying that if he were to bring down the celestial Ganga to earth, perhaps the souls of the sons could reach heaven. Right. But Ganga is powerful mm. and she's buoyant and beautiful and won't come down to earth so easily. So he'd have to do more penance and, and pray does. to Lord Shiva. And Shiva, benevolent as always, appears and says, no, don't worry. I will hold her energy up so that she comes down in a benevolent manner. And as she flows down to earth, there's growth and prosperity everywhere, and the souls finally reach heaven. And she's known as Bhagirati. So we see that there's this one side of Shiva where he's kind and mm. benevolent, but there's another side to him. Yeah, infinite. Infinite. And one such side that you will see Gayatri portray is of the time when his devotees, Shiva's devotees, were praying to him. And Gajasura, who is of a, uh, an asura, like an elephant, shaped like an elephant, comes out of the fire mm -hmm. and destroys or wreaks havoc. Lord Shiva emerges from the fire, tears his skin, and wears it around him like a shawl. I always thought this had so many layers of meanings, right? Yes, beautiful. This could just be uh, the fire itself could stand for our own Chitagni, and from that fire emerges all the toxins, and one of the toxins is anger, where one destroys without any regard. Mm -hmm. And the other thing which I love about Nataraja, what Shiva Sapna is, that all that we offer to him, whether it's toxins or whether from the fire a tiger comes, which was also anger, or whether it's the Gajasura, 
or whether it's the fire itself which is thrown at him, which is what happened in the Daruka forest, right? And or whether it's the or whether it's anything, he takes it and it becomes a beautiful adornment for him. What doesn't enhance us, he takes and it becomes, it enhances him because he is everything. So the elephant skin adorns him. The tiger's skin oh, looks so beautiful on him. And even the poison, which we will go to in a second, how beautiful is he? So this is this beautiful contrast in Shiva that we see. Yes. And we've often talked about this mm -hmm. in a lot of our classes where we see Shiva and Parvati themselves, who are fused together at one, as one, portray this, uh, I, I hate to use the word positive negative, but you know, they have this, they juxtapose this uh, interdependency, which is just so beautiful to watch, and as dancers, easy for us to portray. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next story that we'll, we'll see is of Sage Shilada. Shilada. Oh, yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shilada. <Yes>. Shilada. <laughs> uh, Sage Shilada, who is tilling the soil and comes upon a beautiful newborn baby buried in the sand. And he, he's childless and raises the boy with a lot of love. Now, it, he comes to hear that this boy is soon going to die, and he's so distraught. And he thinks, this is my fate, what to do? And so the boy tells him to not worry, don't worry, I will pray to Lord Shiva. Yes, and he prays. He does, they say, a crow, several crows of Sri Rudram. And he goes to the river bank and does this. and. And Lord Shiva emerges. Emerges. And Shiva says, what do you want? Just a child praying. What would you like? And, and little Nandi, he says, I don't want anything. I have simply seen you. That alone is enough for me. My whole life is all about you. And I want nothing else. And Shiva is so happy. He says, I've never met anyone like you who has asked for nothing but just to be with me. And he says, I bless you. From now, you will always be with me. You will be my vehicle who takes my message everywhere to the universe. You are me, I am you. I, you will be my vehicle. Nandi just says, That is wonderful. Thank you. What more could I ask for? Shiva, you know, he gives, gives, gives. He says, Ah! Oh, and now, you will be right in front of my sannidhi. And people will see you first as they come to see me. They will approach you, and you will take them to me. And in addition, he will also be the guru, the guru to the five, mm -hmm. guru to the five sanakadi munis. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love to say this, Akka, that, and this is something that we've talked about, yes. which is that Nandi, who's in the shape of a bull and is seated in front of the Sannidhi or the inner sanctum where usually Shiva resides, has the singular point of vision to him. Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants to say their prayers to Shiva should whisper into Nandi's ears for them to reach Shiva. Yeah, this is something, I think Nandi is a role model. Yes, for He's sure. patiently watching, never asking for anything, just patiently watching and saying, you know, he's not waiting for Shiva to come and say something, he just watches. Right. And I think what, what really beautifully transitions to the next phase is, we've seen Shiva being so benevolent, so loving, yet there is another side to him. And Gayatri will show very briefly how when Shiva was in tapasya, Kama, the love god, came mm -hmm. and shot arrows at him to disturb him from his penance. And the energy with which Shiva opens his third eye burns Kama to ashes. Yet, he also lovingly plays the veena and sings the praises of Lord Vishnu 
in the form of Rama. So you see this positive and negative, good and bad in Shiva that he portrays through, the, through his various actions. I know he's Sundareshwara, and yet he is that handsome beggar who goes <laughs> house to house, house to house, who asks for arms with this. this. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another um, juxtaposing uh, little piece that Gayatri shows where she says, you wear the bhasma on your forehead, and you have the Rudraksha Male on your neck. And in fact, he has a basma everywhere. Everywhere. And yet, you are known to be a Vaishnava, a huge disciple and devotee of Vishnu himself. Mm -hmm. So we end, or rather Gayatri ends, with this one final episode, which Akka and I absolutely love. We think it is so delicious. Uh, and we will quickly demonstrate before our dancer comes out to actually show you the dance. So Shiva and Vishnu are very good friends. And Shiva tells Vishnu, Vishnu, I've heard that you are so beautiful as Mohini, the female avatar of Vishnu. And hey. Vishnu says, <laughs> Don't go there. Please, can you show me how you look? Because I've heard so many lovely things, but just one time. You will lose yourself. Me? <laughs> Don't even go there. Lose myself? I am the Adi Yogi, and I have all five senses under my control. So one minute, Vishnu's here. Next minute, he's this beautiful damsel. And she's beguiling, and he's so in love with her. He just has to look one time, and he can't believe there is someone so beautiful. Please, will you take a flower for me? <laughs> and, and Shiva just wants to be in her presence and thinks highly of her, cannot think of anyone else, let alone his wife and is completely beguiled and besotted by Mohini. <laughs> <laughs> and so he is trying to get hold of her. And as you know, as Mohini Avatara and Shiva, we have Ayappa. And then when the episode ends and Shiva comes back to his senses <laughs> and Vishnu is watching him, I told you Don't not to go, go there. <laughs> that you would lose yourself. Thank you, Akka. That was lovely. So ladies and gentlemen, we will now have Gayatri perform the Varnam uh, as Akka gets settled. Yes. And uh, let me quickly just uh, remind you that the Varnam description is in your brochure, but it is in uh, Raga Malikai and Adi Talam. And as mentioned before, this has been choreographed specifically for Gayatri by Dr. Nalini Rao. Please enjoy this Varnam. Briefly, we also want to acknowledge the first jati has a sacred Om Namah Shivaya, which is said to contain all the deities within. The Ma is for the Devi, in fact. 
that jati has been uh, choreographed by priya dashni govind the second jati has been composed by ng ravi and it has been choreographed by maya ramurthy and the third jati has been uh, choreographed by me the fourth jati was composed by guru dakshna murthy pillai and uh, it's been choreographed by me but i really think it reflects my teacher this song was given to me as a kirtana long ago by shrimati banumati so i would also like to dedicate this to her memory um it is a kirtana and i'm sure there are aspects of what she taught me in this uh, as it is so many um guru one has learned so i would like to acknowledge the great service shrimati banumati did to the art world शिव शंकर पार्वती 
ರಮಣನೆ ನಿನ್ನ ಧಿ ಕೂತ ಧಿ ಕಿಡ್ ತೋ ತತ್ ತರ್ ತನ ತಿ ತೋ ನ 
nam ta ta thi tung nam ta ta thi tung nam ta 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 Sundar 
ಕಾಶಿನ ಕಾವೇರಿ ತೀರ ಕುಂಭಪುರ for supporting Gayatri while she did her amazing varnam it was a very long dance as you can imagine so please another round of applause for our wonderful dancer we are also very privileged to have in our midst senator shelly mayer who has graced us with our presence ma'am we would like to honor you so please we welcome you up here on stage with us I'm so deeply honored to be able to be here to see this extraordinary, extraordinary performance. We are all so honored by your dance, by the orchestra, by your teachers, by your family, I'm sure, and by your incredible devotion and commitment to this art. We are really, I am very honored. I have a plaque for you somewhere in the back. 
And please know, on behalf of the New York State Senate, we give you all, all the honor and accolades. You, the orchestra, your teachers, and all that have supported you in this beautiful effort. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Take a breath. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Just come. Oh, okay. Yes. Please come. Oh, please. This is for Dr. Rao, for you. Yes. A proclamation from the New York State Senate honoring you. A hearty thanks to the senator for making the time to come and grace us with her presence. At this point, we will take a short break for our intermission and we'll gather back here in about 15 minutes. I believe there's uh, snacks served outside.
We are very lucky to have Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins in our midst. She has graced us with, our pre with her presence and we are so happy to have her here. We would like to honor her by inviting her up to the stage. Senator, please welcome. You may come this way, ma'am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin shortly, so I do invite people in the lobby to make their way into the auditorium. Thank you.
<laughs> the senator would like to address the audience as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is just such an honor and a privilege to be here, even for a short time to honor this great student, um, uh, Gayatri Nair, and her great teacher, somebody who has taught amazing people, over 200, Dr. Rao. And we were just talking about the importance of art and how art can really touch people in so many different ways and bring the cultures together and let people understand the experience of being together, learning about each other, and really helping to change the world. As the leader of the Senate, I know that art matters. That's why we've made sure that this year we gave a million dollars to Arts Westchester, like we did last year as well as arts organizations all over, all over the state. So again, it is an honor for me. I so appreciate your kindness in presenting me flowers. I presented proclamations to both the, the incredible dancer who is graduating since, uh, I guess, age seven, a beautiful, um, wonderful, accomplished dancer. So there's a proclamation from the State Senate for her, and there is also a proclamation for you, Dr. Rao, for all of the wonderful things that you do. So thank you so much, and I want to bring greetings on behalf so much, and I want to bring greetings on behalf. Savitri Ramanand is a well-known Carnatic classical vocalist who has year under the late Sri H A S Mani of Bombay, music maestro Sri T K Govind Rao and her elder sister, Srimati Setu Mahadevan, and the Bombay sisters, Srimati C. Saroja and C. Lalita. Srimati Sa has performed widely in India, the United Kingdom, UAE, and the United States. She has performed at reputed organizations Lincoln Center, the American Museum of Natural History, the Sylvia and Danny Kay Foundation, and the Smithsonian Institute's Folklife Arts Festival. We welcome Mrs. Savitri Ramanand up here on the stage with us. And I'd also like to welcome uh, Mr. Ramanandji. He's always in the back, but really he's a major supporter of the arts. A very major Rasika and a major, major uh, strength, probably the source of the strength for Savitri ji, so it gives me great pleasure to have both of them on stage. And her imagination is limitless. And the same thing goes for Maya, and same thing goes for Rohini too. They, cre they create the creative spirit is so much that they are something very rare, nice, inspiring, which makes you go ahead and do better all the time. It has been always a challenge to work with Nalini ji and her wonderful daughters. Maya and Rohini. So I thank, and I'll be failing in my duty for my husband. Whatever I am today, there is always somebody silent. Check, check, check. Ladies and gentlemen, right before we begin, I've been told that the, senat <laughs> the senators would like to honor Alini Rao for her contribution to the arts. So I welcome the senators back up on stage, please. Murugan, Murugan, 
முருகன் அருள் தரும் குரு பரன்று முகன் வரதன் 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 courage and loyalty. Rama calls to Hanuman and asks for his help in finding Sita who has gone missing. Rama gives Hanuman his signet ring to show Sita as a symbol. Hanuman looks at the ocean separating India and Lanka and then becomes undetected. But there in Lanka, Lankeshwari holds the island like a security guard. And when she sees this little form, she immediately tells him to leave. Only when he is threatened, Hanuman rises to his normal form, and with his left hand, the less mighty one, he punches her, and the less mighty one, he punches her and destroys her with one. And she tells him, I am the lawfully wife of a great soul and the daughter-in-law of the king, Dasharatha. How is it when you look at me with such evil yellow eyes, they don't pop out of their sockets, and when you speak such lustful, ugly words, your tongue doesn't cut open. Thus, Ravana leaves. But when he does, Sita's overcome by her emotions and her sense of abandonment of Rama, and decides she cannot stay with Ravana even one more minute. She decides, to give up her life. As she's contemplating to do so, she hears someone chanting the name of Rama. And she sees his eyes are gentle and his face is benevolent. He has a soft smile plying on his lips and he is chanting Rama's name. Is this a messenger of Rama's? At that time, Hanuman shows her the signet bearing the name of Rama. Immediately she takes it from him, so pleased that Rama has sent a messenger and gives him her Chudamani. Now Hanuman cannot leave Lanka without showing oh, Hanumat Hanumanta Deva Namo ராகவா தேவி 
न बले न च विक्रमै ही न धने न मया तुल्य स्थेज सा यश सा पिवा शक्या लोभे तुम ना हम ऐश्वर्ये न धने न वा अनन्या रागवे ना हम भास करे न यथा प्रभा शिप्रम तवसना सीता पितवर मालिया into a family trained and knowledgeable in classical music. This combination and her love for the arts led her to make sure that her three children were exposed to the arts and her daughter, Nalini, learned classical dance, Carnatic music, and the sitar. She is the reason that Dr. Nalini Rao learned classical dance despite her extended family's silent disapproval. In her late 60s, she, with her husband, superb storytelling of Puranas and of being a fierce, competitive Scrabble player. Many students have fond memories of her telling them stories while their siblings attended dance classes and of giving them chocolates, of which she seems to always have an endless supply. She's known for her innate dignity, honesty, gentle kindness, elegance, and her ever-ready smile and hospitality. In the nine plus years she has been here since her husband passed away, she has become an integral part of our community. We feel blessed to have her, we treasure her, and would like to honor her for her lifetime support of the arts in India and in New York. Please join me in really thanking Aji for all her support of the dance school.
I come from a family where, of educators and dance was looked down upon. My mother took me to dance classes unknown to my father. And because of her, I'm a dancer. So thank you so much. This dance was amazing. I can't <laughs> say in words. Gaitil danced so beautifully, moving like a mercury <laughs> on the stage. Her movements were very great, and Rita and Abhinaya was very, very great. I'm so proud of my daughter, Nalini, for <laughs> training her like that. And uh, of course, Gaitri is amazing. <laughs> very good dancer. Maya, Maya also too. Maya. Maya, her um, Natvangam was very good, her chanting. And of course, my daughter. And the music uh, orchestra was very, very amazing. And um, the Ranjita's mm, music was superb. <laughs> and all the other <laughs> flute and Mzangam uh, was very, very good. Everything. Violin, yes. All the known people. I've been watching through so many years. One time, I don't know if greater than the other like that. So I have the fortune, fortune to see all these things <laughs> by God's grace. Thank you so much. And Sheesh. 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 Him. He's always being <laughs> as That's good. supporting. Okay. I think we're done. Right, Emma? Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Without you, I wouldn't exist. Thank you. You're my anchor. Everything I have is because of my mother. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we'd like to honor the various members of our orchestra. So please uh, join me in thanking each and every one of them. Srimati Ranjita Ayer is a prominent Carnatic vocalist and teacher in Westchester County, New York. She's a brilliant musician with command over the technical aspects of Carnatic music. Srimati Ranjita initially learned Carnatic music from Srimati Prema Anantakrishnan and then Srimati Uma Ayer when she moved to Australia. Upon moving to New York, she continued her music journey with Srimati Savitri Ramanand, whom you met earlier. 
Now she continues learning from Srimati Lalguri Rajalakshmi and her daughter Srimati Jayanti Kumaresh in Bangalore. Srimati Ranjita has performed at various venues in and around the tri-state area. She has also performed at the Chennai Music Festival. Not only is she passionate about music, Srimati Ranjita is also a senior vice president of MasterCard with an undergraduate and master's degree in computer science and an MBA from the Wharton Business School. Please just join me in giving her a round of applause. I think they're inside, but we'd still like to thank them. Our exceptional Mridangam player tonight is Sri Murli Balachandran. Sri Murli hails from a family of dancers and musicians. He studied Mridangam under his father, Dr. C.G. Balachandran, and was introduced to Bharatnatyam by his mother, Srimati Usha. Shimurli is a versatile percussionist who plays the mridangam, kanjira, the tabla, the ghatam, and the morsing with equal ease. Based in New York City, he has accompanied leading musicians and dancers in various countries, including New Zealand, Canada, and Indonesia. He has performed on Broadway and at major venues like the Lincoln Center, the American Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. A round of applause for him, please. Sri Balaskandan is a performer, educator, and composer of Karnatic music. He performs on the violin, the mridangam, and the kanjira, and incorporates konakol in his compositions and performances. Sri Balaskandan received training in violin from Vidushi T. Rukmini and mridangam from Kare Kurimani. He has taught Carnatic music at the Juilliard School of Music, Sarah Lawrence College, and NYU. He is the lead artist and composer of Akshara Music Ensemble, a New York-based Indian classical music-inspired band. Sri Balaskandan currently lives and teaches in Long Island. <laughs> Sri Ravichandra Kulur is an internationally acclaimed flautist from India. Regarded as a flute maestro by the late sitar legend Pandit Ravi Shankar, he has performed in extensively with him and Srimati Anushka Shankar at venues, in an, at venues around the world. With his rich Carnatic classical background and global collaborations, Sri Kulur has a career spanning over 1,200 international concerts in 34 countries. He has played more than 350 session recordings and collaborates frequently with Western classical and fusion jazz musicians around the world while continuing to teach as well. <laughs> Ms. Maya Rao Murthy is a Bharatnatyam performer, Nattu Vanar, and a Mridangist, and is the Associate Director of Natya Anubhava Dance Academy. She's a disciple of Dr. Nalini Rao's in Bharatnatyam and of Sri A.R. Balaskandan's in Mridangam. She has given hundreds of performances, including in Seva Southern Malleshwaram, United Nations, New, New York City Hall, Jewish Museum, Hammond Museum, and the Javits Center. She has directed, composed, and choreographed dance ballets ranging from traditional topics to contemporary themes exploring gender and social justice. She has choreographed multiple margams, taught over 40 students, and co-trained 10 for their arangetram, including Gayatris. She's also trained in flute and is currently learning the karnas under Srimati Ashwini Srivatsan and Chao under Rakesh Sai Babu. <laughs> Last but definitely not the least, Dr. Nalini Ra. Dr. Nalini Rao is a dancer, teacher, and choreographer of the legendary Dandayudapani Pillai style of dance. Dr. Rao has preserved the knowledge and repertoire of her guru, K.N. Dakshnamurti Pillai, by establishing the Natyanubhava Dance Academy. Founded over 25 years ago, Dr. Rao has mentored numerous students and prepared several arangetrams like this one through the years. The values and lessons established through Dr. Rao when the school was set up are still present today and can be witnessed through the dancers and Dr. Rao's commitment to each student. Dr. Rao has created dance ballets on traditional themes such as Devi Saraswati, Krishna, Dashavatara, and Geet Govind. While preserving original Hindu mythology in her choreographies, Dr. Rao also incorporates current world issues such as Nari, the strength of women, Jeevan, corruption and, and war, and Govinda Kathe, the respect for universal values. She has written original scriptures and poetry and composed them into jatis and verses. Dr. Rao has trained over 150 students in the dance school. 
She herself has performed locally, nationally, and internationally at the Arts Westchester, Lincoln Center, New York City Town Hall, the UN Building, Flushing Hindu Temple, Sri Ranganatha Swami Temple, and numerous schools, libraries, and community events in and around the tri-state area. Internationally, she has performed at Margari in Chennai, India, Finlandia Talo, Helsinki, and at the World Religions Conf Conference in Queens, New York. Throughout her illustrious career, Dr. Rao has received several felicitations for her outstanding work. In April 2015, the Arts Westchester awarded her the 50 for 50 award for her work as a choreographer. She received the Natya Navaratna Award from the President of India, Dr. R. Venkatraman, in 1999. The Westchester County Board of Legislators also recognized Dr. Rao's work by proclaiming June 1, 2013 as Dr. Nalini Rao Day, like we're celebrating today, and Natya Nabhava Classical Dance Day. As a student of Dr. Rao's, I I believe that these awards and accolades are just a very small portion of who she really is. She inspires and drives each and every one of us and, we, and inspires us to be the best versions of ourselves. Please join me in giving Dr. Rao a hearty applause. This next dance, Vishamakara Kannan in Chenchuruti Ragam, is an absolute delight. We'll get to see naughty Krishna in all his glory and hear all about his antics. He is dark, like the dark clouds, and yet when he sings, your heart will melt. And the gopis, the village girls, are bribed to give him butter when he mesmerizes them with his flute. Picture this conversation between two gopis. One of them says, hey, do you know what he did this naughty Krishna? You know what? He called to the neighbor's girl and asked her to sing Mukari Ragam. But the poor girl didn't know how to. And you know what he did? He pinched and pinched her till she started to cry. And then he laughed at her and said, ha, your cries sound like Mukari Ragam. Let me tell you what he did to me. I churned and churned and churned my butter, and I didn't want him to steal it. So I put it in a pot and stored it high up on the ceiling, and I even threw a cloth over it. But this naughty Krishna, he comes in and with pebbles broke that pot and ate all my butter. There is no winning with this child. Krishna, Krishna! Where are you? While we wait for Krishna, we'll hear his flute. 
रवि जी run away he is to come back नील 
மேகம் போலே இருப்பான் பாடினாலும் நெஞ்சில் வந்து கூடி
tell me little Krishna didn't capture your hearts. <laughs> so as we near this, the end of the scintillating evening, Gayatri will perform a tillana next. It's complex and rhythmic and dedicated, again, to Lord Krishna, who plays the flute and resides in our hearts. This tillana is in Ragam Hamsanandam, set to Adi Talam. Please cheer on Gayatri as we near the end.
ಪೂಜಿತ ಪರಮ ಭಕ್ತ ಜನ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸರ್ವದ ಪಂಕಜ ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ gentlemen we will now perform the last piece the mangalam the nair family is a little special in that ajit gayatri's father has composed the paradevata vandanam a prayer to all gods as part of this mangalam which ends with traditional choreography so please give give uh, gayatri a round of applause as well as the orchestra for all their amazing work as we conclude with the mangalam and it is a set to tune by Shrimati Ranjita ಚಿನ್ನ 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the standing O. This is awesome. So I'd like to invite Dr. Nalini Rao to give us her final vote of thanks. Thank you. Well, let's have a, another round of applause for Gayatri. And a big round of applause for our amazing, phenomenal orchestra. Murli, Ranjita, Balaskandan, Ravi Kulur, Maya Ramurthy. They are as much part of this performance, honestly. And um, my heartfelt thanks to all of you who stayed on in support of this phenomenal, phenomenal dancer we saw today. Um, it's unusual. Uh, it has been an incredible milestone we've all been privileged to watch. Uh, and it's been a long time coming. It's 12 long years of careful training, nurturing, hard work, sweat, tears, laughter, aches, smiles, and stupendous talent Grace, beauty, inner and outer beauty, dexterity, excellent rhythm, nitta, abhinaya, natya, all these ingredients came together and that's what makes Gayatri a phenomenal dancer. Mm. And her ever ready smile her eagerness to learn, her humility, her sense of humor makes also, makes her a wonderful person. And I always felt that the person and the dancer cannot be separated. <laughs> really one and the same. Now, you, all of you know, you're all connoisseurs here, you're all rasikas, that each, inner, each recital, each Arangate room has its own energy, has its own theme. It just happens organically. Uh, if you remember the Varna Mandu Hanuman had the theme of uh, tapasya, of uh, hard work, of sadhana, of discipline and working. And, uh, and then there was a testing and there were blessings. Uh, for example, Nandi and Hanuman are great role models perhaps. And one of the strands which runs through uh, our training as well as the themes we saw here was sadhana tapasya and hard training. Uh, sheer hard work, really, that's, it takes a lot of hard work. And we saw that today, and a lot of testing. Our daily classes for the Arangitram itself began just before COVID hit. So a lot of our classes were virtual, and you can only imagine how that was with frozen skins and uh, saying, hey, can you adjust the screen this way? I can't see all of you, <laughs> etc. Masked when we ever met. The minimum two hours of classes and the last few a couple of months, maybe it was five to four, uh, four hours, four to five hours or more long. We didn't notice the time go actually. So this, the reason I call it a tapasya is this Arangetram training is like a fire. It just burns away all the impurities. Uh, by impurities, I mean like, a, you know, sometimes one has self-doubt, one has self lack of confidence occasionally, or one, we can, even the, ba the aches and bo uh, pain of the body or the mind can play tricks. And so there's a churning of the mind, and that leaves us with a one-pointed focus. And so we were like two spiritual aspirants in front of the fire, <laughs> 
of knowledge, <laughs> uh, connecting to Nataraja or Shiva Shakti. And so what is the foundation of this tapasya? It was Gayatri's determination to do her best. It was what really sustained her and her passion and joy in her dance and my own passion and joy in watching her dance and in teaching her and my obvious confidence and, and often I used to tell it to her verbally how much I enjoyed her dance. It was not that I didn't correct her, but the good student that she is, she took the corrections sweetly and knew it was only meant for her own good. And she was sustained also by a very fierce nurturing by Maya, whose eagle eye would pick out the slightest difference in Tala or the smallest lapse, and she would have both of us actually practicing. And now her uh, parents' immense love, her immense pride, her brothers and her parents and all of you, her immense, your love for her. These, this kept the fire growing strong. And this fire is really our own consciousness, the Chitagni. The mantra which we offer today was Shiva, Shiva, Shiva. And my underlying sankalpa here was, I must see this child through, I must see her through, I must see her talent blossom. And I must know that we have done our best. And we must be able to smile when the recital ends. And thanks to the grace of Nataraja that has and your support, that has been the case. And Arthapasya has had not just the intangible um, benefits of contentment and inner peace and the tangible ones of a whole mind and body, but knowing that we did our best and it came through through the grace of God. Some people, sometimes we wonder, especially when we're having uh, hard times, uh, why do we dance? Why do we sing? Why are we in the arts? And why are the rasikas coming to see our dance? What is it that gets us going to see a program? My feeling is that we, all of us together here are participating in this joy, this ananda, which is Nataraja, really. This, uh, this shana, when we, when we are watching and we are immersed, the time stands still and we see this joy in us reflected in the dancer and reflected back. And this essence of this joy ripples out from ourselves to our family, to the community, to the universe. And I think life is joy and dance is joy. And there is healing in it. And I find that our Puranas are very relevant for this. For example, the Samudra uh, Mathana, the, and the poison came out. And recently we had COVID, all the toxins came out. <laughs> Just like there was a churning. And it threatened all of existence, much like it did yawns ago. And here too, all of us held on. We stayed calm. Uh, we did not let fear enter our hearts. And we churned our minds. And all these toxins went out. In, in our Arangetram training in the tapasya, the toxins which came out, once they were out, I discovered beautiful gifts, new gifts in Gayatri, uh, new layers of meaning in our own stories. We found, I found that Gayatri has a real gift for Konakal. She has a sharp eye for transcribing Tala. And, and I found, which I had not yet seen in a group class, that she was completely prepared for each class. She not only listened ahead of time to the music, but she transcribed it. And that's quite unusual. So uh, she was constantly updating a Google share, <laughs> because that's a new way to teach, right? With the virtual. <laughs> and I'd offered Gayatri very standard items, honestly. Half, half hoping she'd say yes, but she wanted to grow. So she chose this very, very difficult pieces. And uh, I love Maya's choreography of Pushpanjali, and I love Ma Gayatri's interpretation of it. And all this only happened because of our orchestra. Our orchestra is truly, truly incredible. They're each one a um, master in their own uh, field. And even young Maya, too. She's gone far beyond me, really. 
And one of the reasons I like watching an Arangetram is I watch a community come together like we have here. It's not just, I can't do this alone, and nor can Gayatri. You all make it happen, and I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. And I also want to personally thank uh, Murli Balachandran for his amazing dexterity in various percussion uh, instruments. I want to thank Ranjita Ayer for her beautiful, soulful singing. She's amazingly dedicated. She spent countless hours with me, which cannot even be really counted. Uh, and uh, I want to thank Balas Kandan, who's also my uh, children, my twins' uh, guru in Miradangam. He was he's so dedicated, and he added so many layers to this uh, performance. And uh, Ravi Kalur, whom we have, uh, who was just outstanding too, who added so much with his beautiful, soulful uh, flute. And I would like to thank the parents for entrusting Gayatri with to me. I believe that without music, there is no dance, and without dance, there is no life. And today, we saw life in abundance here. My deepest gratitude go to my gurus, Guru Dakshinamurti Pillai, Guru U.S. Krishna Rao. I thank them every single moment as I teach. And my spiritual gurus, Karanamai, and Swami Bodhananda Saraswati. My Adi Guru, my mother, Saraswati Rao. My daughter, Rohini. Uh, Hari Rao Murthy, my son, uh, who has given me pointers in my jatis, and my daughter Maya, who is really turned teacher on me, who teaches me <laughs> now. And she trained Gayatri with me. My very loving thanks to my Natya Nubhava family. I see many, many students whom I taught before and the parents. And I really love it that you came here. It means a lot to me. And uh, and my young ones, my young students too who have come here. Without you, we couldn't do this. And my special loving thanks to Sapna, Nitya, Supraja, Aditi, Nishta, and many, many volunteers in the back, and uh, Anupji, and your lovely wife, and the entire crew of video and, uh, and uh, sound. I, uh, I thank you. Each one of you, Mr. G, each one of you, I thank you for being here, for uh, uh, being making this such a beautiful offering, such a beautiful Nitya Arpana to my beloved Nataraja. Thank you. I would like to uh, offer the, my plaque, uh, a plaque to her. I always give a poem. It's very short. Nataraja, swirling, your presence fills the space. My feet lift and dance to your nada of all that is your prasada, our shared joy. Gayatri, I'm so, so proud of you. You've done a brilliant job, and you've been such a delight to teach. During this time, you've become like a younger sister to me, and I'm seriously going to miss spending hours with you and Amma every single day. Amma, I loved your innovative choreography for these challenging set of items, and being home with both of you has been pure fun. Seeing Gayatri all day, watching Amma tirelessly working and inventing past midnight, though I wouldn't mind a little more sleep. <laughs> Um, Gayatri, your dancing was beautiful, and Amma, your choreography was beautiful. And sometimes, you know, I even forget to do my Natwanga when I watch her dance. She's doing so beautifully. I love you, and I'm so excited for your promising future in dance and everything else you pursue.
too short for this. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? That wasn't enough. Any more? There we go. So, as some of you may or may not know, I was actually supposed to have my Edingate drum exactly two years ago, in the year 2020, after I'd graduated from high school. And clearly that didn't happen, because we're all here in the year 2022. But during that year of 2020, I thought that I would never really be able to have my Edingate drum, mainly because there was a little global pandemic going on. And having the Edingate drum was the least of our worries at that time. In addition to that, I was going off to college, so I didn't think I would be able to balance the vigorous coursework of college and dedicate enough time to dance. My first year in college, I barely danced. There was a lack of motivation, and months went by where I didn't even look at a single dance in my modicum. And because of that, I had forgotten a lot of my dances. During my first year of college, both Nalini and Maya had reached out to me. They said that we should try our best to prepare for the I'd engage in the summer of 2022. And if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, it didn't. As my second year in college started, we started preparing for the I'd engage in once again. Honestly, it felt like we started at square one because I did such a great job of forgetting all my dances. And after another year of rigorous training, here we are today, finally. This day would not have happened without the people who have helped me become the dancer I am today and the countless people that helped me with the program, and me and my parents with the program. I would like to start off by thanking Nalini Nalini is perhaps the most knowledgeable person I know. There is never a lack of depth in her explanations of techniques, stories, concepts, and because of that endless knowledge, I've been able to stay connected with our culture, and it's very difficult as an Indian American. She also is the most patient and understanding person I've ever met. Like I mentioned before, I'd forgotten quite a lot of my dances, but she was never upset about it and patiently re-choreographed. Even while having a million things going on in her personal life, she's always been dedicated to her students, and I think that's admirable. So I think she deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Next, I would like to thank Maya, and like Maya said, she feels like I'm her little sister. She feels like an older sister to me. Maya is absolutely amazing. Even after not feeling well from a concussion, she was more than willing to teach me and take part of this day and play Nakhvangam. Like Nalini her knowledge seems to be endless. Maya always checked in on me to make sure I was OK and if there's anything I needed help with. And just that gesture made me feel supported. So thank you, Maya, for being a part of my Ed Gatrum journey. I would like to thank my Moniatum teacher, Binti Anti, who has always been so confident in me. During my Adengatum training, she provided advice at a time I really needed, and I'm truly grateful for that. She honestly feels like an extension of our family, so I'm glad to have her here as well. I'm truly blessed to have two amazing gurus who have led my dancing career. Next, I would like to thank the orchestra, Murli Uncle, who is just incredible at what he does, and his ability to multitask is truly unmatched. Ranji Danti, who is also my singing teacher for those that don't know. So I'm unbiased when I say she has a beautiful voice. She was also so supportive during the Edengate process and attended multiple practice sessions, which helped me very much. Balas Kandan uncle, who did a fantastic job on the violin. Finally, Ravi uncle, who played the flute and took us all to the next level. I am so honored and privileged to have danced with such amazingly talented people, and I think they also deserve a round of applause. I would like to thank our MC, Sapna. I have never met someone as charismatic as her, and I'm so glad she was able to MC this event. Hours of work were put in on her end, and I truly appreciate her. <laughs> there is a bunch of people running around backstage today and for the past few months, so I want to recognize those people as well. Ganesh uncle, Kuchuni uncle, and Rajan Chatan, who ran around for the past few months getting everything together. My parents and I could not have done this without their help. 
Soumya Gigi and Denji the Gigi who are backstage helping me with costume and makeup, Nitya Anti and Nishta who are help, helping backstage, Reggie Uncle and his team with sound and lighting, as well as Supraja Anti and Aditi who are helping with the lighting cues. I would like to thank Manoj Uncle with photography and Soji Media with videography, and of course Sudag and Uncle who did the wonderful decorations up here and out there. I didn't see it yet, but I'm sure it's great. I also can't forget to thank my mom and my dad. They already know that I'm thankful for them, so I'll leave the cheesiness out of the speech. And finally, I would like to thank all of you for attending my Edengate room. This has been an intense process, and I'm so glad that each one of you were able to come and see this event. So thank you. I think next we're going to... Yes. I got this. Okay, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one final announcement before we leave. We would like to have Mr. Thomas Kovalur up here on stage. He has been single-handedly responsible for procuring all the proclamations from the city and state. He'd be presenting Gayatri with a certificate from the mayor of Yonkers. So please, sir, please come up here on stage with us. Thank you, Sapna. Uh, your name is familiar with me. And uh, I'm glad that the culture, you know, that is the one brings the people to, together. Like uh, the last uh, you mentioned, Loga Samasta Sugino Bhavandu, you know, that is the Indian culture. And th the, I am glad that the Senate Majority Leader, Andre Stewart Cousins, already declared that they allowed one million dollar for the culture. That's a great news. And I, I am glad, yeah, it's already she mentioned. And uh, I think as a student, Gayatri Nair, Gayatri Devi is, <laughs> is uh, eligible for that. So it's already mentioned in the uh, proclamations state. Two senators, you, you know, one million dollar. And uh, uh, Dr. Malini Nair, and both of you can claim it. <laughs> uh, this, uh, th this is from the mayor. Office of the Mayor, City of Yonkers, certif Certificate of Recognition to Gayatri Nair, 2020 Dance Graduation Ceremony. You know, dance culture, keep, that brings, that is our identity, and to keep it, and to, you know, organize it nicely, so that, you know, you can, we, all the politicians will come after you. Congratulations. <laughs> I know Gayatri Nair many, many years, and she, whenever we organize program, when the municipal is standing up, Oh, you did a wonderful Thank job. you. Thank you for coming. We'd like to take this opportunity to give our thanks to each member of the esteemed orchestra this afternoon. We'll start with Srimati Ranjita Ayer. <laughs> Shri Murli Balachandran. Shri 
Shri A.R. Balaskandan. And Shri Ravi Chandra Kulur, please. Ms. Maya Rao Murthy. And Dr. Nalini Rao, whose day we celebrate today. Let me invite our best MC, Sapna Arvind. This is for uh, Nalini Ji's mom, for being such a great mom. And this is for uh, Mr. Murthy. <laughs> Naliniji's husband. And thank you so much, Mr. Murthy.
now one more bindia ji please come to the stage as you all know she is a her mohini atam teacher bindia shabrinath ഞാനത് പ്രോഗ്രാം കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ബാക്ക് സ്റ്റേജിൽ കൊടുക്കാമെന്ന് വിചാരിച്ചതായിരുന്നു ഐ ഡോ വോണ്ട് ടു ഇൻറ്ററപ്റ്റ് ദ ടൈമിങ്സ് ബട്ട് ഐ തിങ്ക് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് ടൈം ദിസ് ഇസ് എ സ്മോൾ സംതിങ് ഫ്രം ബോട്ടം ഓഫ് മൈ ഹാർട്ട് ടു മൈ ബിലവ്ഡ് സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ഗായത്രി I now invite the Nair family, uh, specifically Ajit and Shaila, for the final vote of thanks. Don't worry, it's only a 10-minute speech. Are you ready for it? <laughs> Hello, everyone. We have been waiting for this moment to express our gratitude to all of you and to the esteemed guests who came to watch our daughters Gayatri's Arangetram Atithi Devo Bhava that translates to guests who are equivalent to god meaning Gayatri was able to perform in front of gods and goddesses that's deva sabhadalam to begin with let us thank almighty the supreme being who blessed us to have this arangetram at this time under all the circumstances thank you dr nalini rao for being such patient and noble teacher Nalini ji you not only taught her bharatanatyam but explained the concept and theories behind each dance and you are literally transferring the indian culture to all the students thank you mrs ranjita for your time patience and the effort you put in ranjita is ranjita here is actually her music teacher as well i also want to thank i have no words to express my gratitude to maya murthy she is such a dedicated sister to gayatri and guru thank you to the orchestra now i have i cannot say anything because you all witnessed it murli balachandran ji sri balaskandan ji sri ravi chandra kulur we gave him some punishment also we gave him our food <laughs> who did an amazing job with their musical talents 
Now, what you're witnessing now here, do you all like this stage decoration? <laughs> that is a selfless approach of Sudhagaran Pillai, Sudhagaran Chetan, I call him. And he said, Gayatri is our daughter, so we have to do it. <laughs> I said, I'm listening that from everyone, so it looks like Gayatri is everybody's daughter. <laughs> and we are so happy to hear that, each one of you. Also, Satish, Satish Kalat, he, he removed all the flowers he de decorated in his home. He took like one day to remove all these flowers. And he also said the same thing about Gayatri and helped. They got the help from uh, Srijit and my transit friend, Kishaloi Malik. Thank you, Kish. Now you might have witnessed the pukalam, the flower decorations. Did you like it? And that is done by Shaila's close friend. They work together, Regina and Maggie and Supraja. A lot of help from Regina's mother, everyone. Regina's daughter, sorry. <laughs> I think I missed many names, <laughs> sorry. Now, every time you see Gayatri is dancing with one costume and then she's changing it every now and then. So it's like an endless process. And along with, she was doing the makeup for her. That's one of the reasons that she could not come out and greet you all. And another reason for me not to come and greet you all is that I have to concentrate on the Ravan role that I was doing. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed it. <laughs> Oops, the paper, the page disappeared. <laughs> because I mentioned Ravan, maybe. <laughs> now, Saumya Prajish is just like a sister to Gayatri, and so is Ranjita Rathavuni. They both help Gayatri to change her costumes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Manoj Nambiar and Nisha Nambiar for the invitation video and the save the date video, which was directed by Manoj Nambia's wife, Nishan Nambia, unfortunately, she could not come. She was, she's in India now. She directed that, both videos. And also, along with Manoj Nambia, we had Praveen. Praveen, they both did the photo shoot that the pictures you see outside is done by Manoj Nambia and Praveen Sri Prakash. This Arangetam would not have occurred the way it did without our friends, Ganesh Nair, every day, at least four times, Ganesh calls me, Chetta, what happened to that? What happened to this? No, we had to do it, such, it in such an amazing way. And also, along with Ganesh, Rajin Ravindran, Kochuni Eleven Madam, he was, he's like a, Big brother to me, uh, Partha Saradi Pillichat, and he's also like a brother to me. Surendran Nair, he's also a brother to me. Sri Gumar Unnichat, and he, Unnitan, he's also like a brother. And Vinod KRK, he's also like a brother. Now everybody is like brother and sister, so I'm not saying that again and again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there are so many names. Sorry that I have to, if I forget any name, please forgive me. I know somebody's looking at the watch to see I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, Kishloi Malik, I already told your name. 
Uh, I don't want to repeat your name. Thank you, Kish. Ajit and Deepa, who brought the lunch for us from all the way from Connecticut, and they helped us in many things. Thank you, Ajit and Deepa. Sunil, Supraja, and Aditi, amazing help. Thank you so much. Nitya, Nishta. Okay. And now, Ganesh's wife, Sina Ganesh Nair, his daughter, Gopika Nair, Greshma, and Ganesh's mother, she helped making the bouquet. Shandama, Prajish, Anish Gobin, Jayesh Patil for the delicious food, Dhiru Patel and Mahul Patel, Sriram and Sanjana, we are so grateful to you, your support. Recovering children, Dr. Suvarna for being our official doctor. <laughs> for their unconditional support, then I cannot speak without you, Raji, Anub, and Binu, for an amazing job with the sound and the light system. Sorry if I am dragging it. Creative entertainment. Soji for the video, I think Matthew also is here. The entire school team, Mr. Nelson, John, David, and other custodians and security. We thank you for your presence once again. If I missed anyone, please forgive me. It's the time and I lost my memory because of Corona. <laughs> Are you hungry? Hey, let's go eat. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And all of you, please, let's get together in the lunchroom, coffee chair.